Our second speaker today is uh, Vai Wahi. She is Yupiak from St. Lawrence Island. <coughs> the St. Lawrence Island is in the middle of the, the Bering Sea. Uh, Vai is a community activist and she heads the, um, the Alaska Community Action Group on Toxics. Thank you, Vai. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Vai Wari. I'm from St. Lawrence Island in Simunga, Alaska. Our mission is to assure justice by advocating for environmental and community health. We believe everyone has the right to clean air, clean water, and toxic free food. Alaska has 700 formerly used defense sites. And on this map, you will see most of them are along the coast during the Cold War uh, because of our proximity to Russia, the military established a lot of bases. And um, a lot of them have been abandoned or have been buried. Some of the concerns that we have from contaminants in the North include that the North has become a hemispheric sink for pesticides and other industrial chemicals. Data, data from the last birth defects registry shows that birth defects in Alaska children is twice as high as in the United States as a whole. This is St. Lawrence Island. I, we have the two villages. On the left side is Gamble, which is older of the two villages. We are closer to Siberia than what we call mainland Alaska. And we have relatives over there who speak the same dialect we do. And during the Cold War, our ties were cut. And Savunga is in the middle of the island, and Northeast Cape is on uh, the far right. 750 to 800 people in each village. Our people live a subsistence lifestyle. They live off the land and ocean, like we have for many generations. And when the Air Force came, late 40s, they went to Gamble, one of the older, older two villages on our island. Our people welcome the military. Uh, they help rescue down planes. Our men enlisted in the Alaska uh, National Guard. Our Air Force and um, Army established a base in Gamble. And then on the other end of our island at Northeast Cape, the Air Force came during the early 50s. And when they left, they abandoned the two bases. And Annie Aloha, a former health aide, tried to get help for our people because of all the cancer she was seeing in our families. She tried to get help for our people for 20 years, got sent to agency, to agency, to agency, and nobody would validate her concerns. This is a picture of Annie at Northeast Cape where there was, um, the, the base had been abandoned. <clears throat> we are using our St. Lawrence Island project as a model in Northern Sound, looking at military contamination and global transport. At Northeast Cape, the Sople River, um, there was a massive fuel spill of up to 220,000 gallons spilled from the negligence of the Air Force. It, was, it had been a big installation, about two to 300 personnel, and there is no more fish in this river. We have no more tomcat fishing off the coast, no more seal haul-outs. And our people live off the land and ocean. We um, hunt for walrus, seal, whale. We eat a lot of fish, um, plants and berries. And this picture is 50 years later. And the Army Corps of Engineers who's responsible for the cleanup is telling us that it's biogenic that it's natural occurring. As you can see, there's a sheen there. When you walk in the river in the estuary, there's plumes that come up. You can still smell it. Um, this research has concluded that the levels of PCBs in the blood of St. Lawrence Island, you pick people, are six to nine times higher than the uh, populations in the lower 48. Out of the three groups that we tested, um, the, the, the middle blue graph in the middle is of Sibunga residents that had lived at Northeast Cape when the, uh, they were building the base that had worked there or have fish, 
camps there or uh, do some subsistence fishing. And then the other uh, group to my, the right is other Savunga residents, and on the far left are Gambo residents. And the red bar in the bottom is the average for populations in the lower 48, uh, along with cancer, thyroid disease, diabetes, heart disease, low birth weight babies, premature births, stillbirths and miscarriages, and other reproductive health problems. Summary of contaminants on St. Lawrence Island, we've identified our PCBs, pesticides, heavy metals, PAHs, due to the military contamination and global transport of POPs from the lower 48 and other countries. From Morgan Apatiki, who we hired and trained to collect traditional food samples for our traditional food study, where we're um, collecting our foods, fresh and freshly killed food and prepared foods, to test for contaminants. Global warming threats to our tra uh, traditional lifestyle, decreased availability in our subsistence foods, the rapid weather changes, increased storm surges. It is harder to go hunting. It is harder to predict the weather because of the rapid climate change. The waters are more rough. We have to go out further because there's no ice. So it's become more dangerous. And uh, the availability of the food that we live off of, like the walrus, which is the main um, staple. So there, there's big significant threats, not only to our, the land that we live off of, the way that we live, and our subsistence foods. Threats to, the, to our environment, loss of sea ice, change in seasons, shrinking polar ice cap. If you can see the map on the right, it will show the ice edge how it used to be and how it is today. Uh, and those are other pictures of our polar bear with the shrinking sea ice and the walrus and the uh, breaking of the uh, ice that you see. Climate change is occurring faster than people can adapt. It is strongly affecting people in many communities in some cases cases threatening their cultural survival. <clears throat> Lives lost due to global warming. All of these villages have lost people on the ice. When, we, when you have a small village of 300 or 400 people losing three or four of their senior hunters, it's a big loss. A lot of the elders will no longer go out on the sea ice because of their knowledge will not work anymore. What they've learned and passed on for 5,000 years is no longer functional. That's a quote from Steve Steiger, who's the founder of Global Warming 101. <clears throat> Another quote is from Fanny B. Iwana of Shishmaraf. Due to unusual ice conditions, one of our local young hunters lost his life, which has not occurred in our community in my lifetime. Global warming impacts is coastal erosion, you will see we are unique and need to be valued as a national treasure by the people of the United States. We deserve the attention and help of the American people and the federal government. Some of our people feel that uh, in the lower 48, because of natural disasters, people come to their aid, whereas communities like Shishmaraf, who have been falling into the ocean, have not gotten help. So. <clears throat> More impacts are from melting permafrost, exposing military debris, and glacial ice melt. You'll see the before picture on top and the after picture on the bottom. Increased water temperature. We are seeing new species never seen before, like squid sharks and barracuda, and other fish never seen before. <clears throat> The Arctic Ocean will be ice-free in summer by 2040. Our research indicates that society can still minimize the impacts of the, on Arctic ice. I urge the scientific community to do their role for immediate changes to climate change and global warming policy needed to protect our people in the Arctic and Northern Hemisphere. 
My people need your voice to reverse the threats to our lands, our environment, and our subsistence foods. We need your help to protect our way of life, our well-being, our identity, and existence. Thank you. Thank you.